Okay, this is the product we are talking about today. It is a slip ring. It enables you to transmit any kind of signal through a rotating component. Yeah. This is fixed, this is rotating, as you can see here. So it is used, for example, in a wind wheel. And this is the same slip ring in augmented reality. Here you can put it anywhere on the table. You can zoom it, rotate it. You can take your smartphone, go around it. You can zoom inside, go inside. And this is made with PIMCOR. How we made it? Let's have a look. Okay, first of all, a very warm welcome to the PIMCO Inspire 2021, also from our side. Uh, we are very happy uh, that we can participate again this year. And we are also very happy to be a part of the PIMCO ecosystem. So something we'd like to say at the beginning, um, thank you PIMCO for great product, for great ecosystem, and again for the great event, uh, PIMCO Inspire 2021. My name is Christoph. I work for Interra as a PIMCO consultant. And together with my colleague uh, Wilhelm, I will present you one of our cool PIMCO projects of the last year. Yes, my name is Wilhelm and I'm a software developer at Interra with a focus on PHP, Symfony and PIMCO development. Who we are? We are Interra. Um, this is our headquarter you've seen here in um, Hanau. It's uh, close to Frankfurt am Main in the heart of Europe. Um, this is a building from the Imperial area, um, which was later used as barracks um, by the Americans. Um, so there's a lot of history at this place. And um, yeah, I would like to say we still make history here at this place um, together with PIMCOR. Interra itself was founded in 1992 as a corporate division of a company called Unitech, um, which itself is an engineering and construction consulting um, and it's also specialized um, in 3D and CAD modeling. We are now around about 24 employees. Um, we are still growing. Um, I would say like every one of us, everyone who's in a partnership with the PIMCOR would sell it. It, it helps. Um, we now realized more than 100 up to 200 projects um, in the last years. We are not specialized in any sector, um, so we have mostly mid-sized customers, um, I would say, in different sectors like industry, like trading, car rental is a quite huge sector still, um, but also the public sector. To do individual software de uh, development is um, a strong part of our DNA. This is what we are. This is where we came from. But we have always been great in learning how the customer think. So consulting was always a huge part in our work. And it uh, becomes more and more um, also uh, with PIMCO. Um, PIMCO, especially at the beginning, um, is something um, where you have to do a lot of uh, consulting um, to uh, have a deeper look at the product, to have a deeper look at the processes. Um, and to have a deeper look on um, how you integrate PIMCOR in those processes. Furthermore, it's still very necessary to preach um, the HL philosophy for us and to know how to make successful projects in an HL world. So especially for our mid-sized customers, um, it's still, uh, I would say, something quite new. Um, to do uh, projects in an agile approach. And this is where we um, give support, where we help, and um, yeah, uh, to make it possible to have a successful project at the end. And uh, based on all that, uh, we built several solutions um, in the e commerce uh, sector um, with PIM uh, solutions um, and also, last but not least, um, configuration solutions like the one we are now looking at a little bit deeper. 
Um, but uh, first of all, um, let me tell you something about our partnership with PIMCO. Um, it was around about eight years ago in 2012. Um, we were searching for an open source PIM system for a new customer. Um, this customer wanted us to develop a price configurator for his industry machines. And for that, uh, we needed a powerful backend um, to administrate all the components, all the rules, all the dependencies. Um, and one uh, very important requirement for us was to use an open source system because at this point we always used open source uh, software. We um, loved open source uh, software um, and we see all the benefits. And um, yeah, this is something we still do um, to use open source um, yeah, in, in every uh, yeah, position we can. So that was the beginning of a great partnership, I would say. Um, so we used PIMCO for that project. And um, after, uh, after that, we, um, yeah, we, we had several projects uh, from small to huge scopes. And um, this has been a lot of uh, projects since um, these days. And yeah, last but not least, we are still very proud that we are one of the first PIMCO lovers and one of the first PIMCO partners in history. Yeah, today we are talk about one of um, these configurator projects, um, the so-called slippering configurator. Um, it's a slipping configurator we built um, together uh, with our customer, um, the company called Schleifring, which just means the same. So Schleifring is the German word for slippering. Schleifring itself is um, the market leader in develop and manufacture electrical slip rings and so-called contactless rotary transmitters. What does that mean and uh, what do you need a slip ring for? Um, a slip ring enables electrical power or signal transmission between components which are rotating against each other. So you have those components, they are rotating. Um, and you need uh, to uh, transmit uh, any kind of signal through it. It is used, for example, in a wind wheel, uh, which is rotating, um, in uh, computed tomography, in helicopters, and also in space travel. So every PIMCONAUT needs to know what a slip ring is. Now we have a short video for you to give you a better understanding of the Schleifring company. Because standstills aren't an option, you need a reliable partner. It doesn't matter what challenges you might face when it comes to transmission technology. Schleifring will develop the optimal slip ring with you and for your individual requirements. We know that transmission doesn't always mean transmission. Each element, whether energy, data, media, electrical or optical signal, entails varying demands. Thanks to our wide range of transmission technologies, we guarantee the best possible path through the slip ring. Let's take a closer look at each of our technologies. Schleifring's contacting solutions, such as the proven gold wire technology, provide excellent power and data transmission. Our contactless technologies, the capacitive data, and the inductive power transmission enable the transfer of all data links in a wide power range. If large volumes of data have to be transmitted over long distances, then Schleifring's optical rotary joints are the very best option. For water, oil, coolants, gas, and air, we also provide high-end solutions to transmit various media and thereby meet all your needs. Regardless of whether your slip ring should send out these signals simultaneously or only one aspect is relevant. We'll only be satisfied once we've found the best solution for you. All materials in the entire geometry of your slip ring are fitted perfectly to your application. High pressures, high speeds, extreme environmental influences, our team of experienced engineers keeps everything in perspective and guides you from the concept to the implementation and through to maintenance. We look forward to meeting your challenge because standstills simply aren't an option.
Okay, yes, standstills aren't an option. I like this attitude. Um, okay, now let's talk about um, the motivation. Why does Schleifring needs a product configurator? So first of all, um, one of the challenges um, they had to handle in the past uh, was that every slip ring is individual. So the process was there is uh, any kind of customer um, who needs a solution for his, um, yeah, for example, for his wind wheel. Um, he has to call to, uh, with a, with a um, sales manager. The sales manager uh, needs a construction, uh, yeah, someone from, from the construction um, sector. And um, all the knowledge of the employees wasn't centralized. Huh? Um, so that means the whole management um, of, the, of the offer process was very time consuming. Um, furthermore, digital solutions um, don't make mistakes. Um, and yeah, the um, process, a manual process is very often very um, error prone. And yeah, last but not least, standstill aren't an option um, and we can do it much better. Now we talked a little bit about the why, about the background. Um, let's talk about the how, how we made this uh, project, um, how we started. And as I told you before, we um, only work in agile approaches. Um, and one of the most important philosophies in, in our point of view um, in an agile environment is to think MVP. For those who didn't know what MVP means, it um, stands for Minimum Viable Product. means it's an approach um, where you tailor your requirements um, so, you, uh, so that you have a first small product. Um, you test it on the market uh, as early as you can. Um, you gather all the feedback from your customers and from, from um, the users and you um, work with this feedback. You, know, you make it better step by step and you will find out that many of your requirements suddenly became obsolete or that you have completely new ideas because you talked with the customer about several functionalities so don't ignore the market uh, keep your initial environment small um, and you can also achieve a lot in in small steps that's um, the philosophy of i think mvp um, yeah, and uh, at last I would say PIMCO is absolutely MVP compatible um, because of its low code and its rapid development approach. Uh, so if you like, you can be very fast at market with PIMCO. Yeah, and this is something we also applied together with Schleifring. How we did it? Um, first of all, we started with Scribbles. We started with the first um, XD, uh, Adobe XD click dummy and the first prototype. Um, all these conceptual results um, were discussed internally, uh, internally and were discussed with uh, some customers. And based on that, the next step was a minimum viable product with a quite simple functionality. Yeah, and then after MVP, um, we improved continuously. So um, it was a process, it was an evolution, we changed the design, we added functionality, we canceled functionality, um, we made a new design and um, getting better and better um, with every step. Yeah, um, means in 2016, as we started, um, there was a very small MVP um, well, it was just able to, uh, we're just able to configure. There was no e-commerce functionality at all. Um, version one uh, followed in 2018 to 2019. Um, had a corporate design update. Uh, we had an enhancement in the user experience, um, and uh, yeah, added the first e-commerce functionality. In 2020, we integrated um, the given shopware uh, system. Um, until that, um, the shopware shop um, Schleifring had only sold component parts and stuff for maintenance. So like oil and tools and stuff like that. Uh, now um, with the integra uh, integration uh, into shopware, the customer was able to configure a slip ring, 
put it into the shopping basket of shopware and buy it together with yeah with oil with tools and stuff like that um yeah and last but not least in this year in 2021 um, we added a new kind of slip ring um, the so-called forge slip ring which um, allows the customer to transmit uh, optical signals to a slip ring and had a complete ui ux relaunch and added um, yeah very cool uh, 3d and r air uh, augmented reality functionalities okay let's go a little bit deeper into the technique and into the system um, so uh, as you see in um, this diagram where the process starts is an EAP system like in uh, every uh, in every customer situation you have an EAP system with the metadata um, so it was also in, in uh, here in this project, um, Schleifring has SAP and um, SAP uh, deliver us a component based, par uh, component based part list. So every component uh, has a part list with uh, several you know, parts uh, like screws or um, stuff like that. Um, and this part list is delivered to PIMCO. Um, where you can then um, configure a new sli uh, slip ring with. Yeah? Um, and the concept is that um, every time you configure a new uh, slip ring, um, you can configure a slip ring which has never been configured before. Yeah? So this is the main concept. Um, we then uh, added a, a kind of a self-learning functionality so um, with every new configuration, um, this configuration was saved uh, into PIMCOA and um, can be reused uh, for further uh, configurations. Yeah. After that, uh, you can add the um, item you configured into the shopware card. Um, there's a shopware integration um, implemented here and shopware itself um, do the rest communication um, with uh, SAP and place order um, so the, the slip ring can be delivered to the customer. Now let's have a look at the architecture that we use. The architecture is split into two main different parts. Um, the first one is the shopper instance and the second one is the PIMCO instance. On to the PIMCO instance we built our own REST API and this REST API is the main interaction with the Vue.js app that is deployed onto the Shopware instance and it also interacts with the Shopware store API. Together with the store API, it is mainly used for validation methods like the current currently logged in user and if he has a valid session and it's also used for price validation. Between the REST API and the Vue.js app, there's also a communication that involves the components that are used in the configuration and every other information that is displayed during the configuration process. Between the Vue.js app and the JavaScript API inside of Shopware, there's also some interaction mainly used for adding a product to cart. This has the advantage that we can focus in the, inside the Vue.js app on only the configuration process and everything that is involved in order management that um, is then um, being transferred to the JavaScript API and the shopware. Now let's have a look at the configuration code. The configuration code used um, for every slip ring is split into different chunks. Each represents a part of the slip ring and also gives information about where the part could sit. For example, the last two parts, 2 and the K3, give information about whether the component sits in the back or in the front of the slip ring. And we also have a few parts of the configuration code that don't have to be visible. For example, the whole part of M4, ABI and 1. They give all information about what is inside the center part, but not everything of that is, vis is visible and not everything of that has to be visible. To the configuration logic, the main part of the configuration is the configuration itself. One configuration represents one complete slip ring and the configuration contains relations to different components that were selected by the user. The configuration is always unique and it's possible to create a completely new slip ring that has never been created before. 
Inside the configuration, like I said, sit the slippering components. These contain component-specific data, like prices, the configuration code, that is then built onto the full configuration code that we just saw. Um, it also contains compatibility with other components and information that is displayed during the configuration process, like slippering component metrics or other data. The slippering components are split into different classes inside of PIMCore, which enables us to use many different properties for each slippering component. The last part of the configuration logic is the meta configuration. These meta configurations can be assigned to multiple slip rings and multiple configuration, and they represent an abstract product type. They contain meta information like 3D models, assets, including CAD, drawings and images, and the metrics for the slip rings itself. Okay, now it's time for a little demonstration of the slip ring configurator. So this is um, the entry point of um, the configurator. Um, so as you can see, you can just start into the configuration, um, but you can also um, choose an installation space. Uh, so when you have a special uh, solution you need um, for a uh, yeah, limited uh, installation space, you can um, yeah, define it here. Uh, you can also use a uh, um, configuration code you um, used in the part in the past. Um, yeah, uh, but you can also start just with a new configuration. Okay, so um, as you can see here, you have several um, yeah several areas where you can choose, uh, for example, um, uh, A module um, or B module. Um, and on the uh, left side, you have all the functionality, all the informations you need. And on the right side, um, you have a preview. You, know, you have several preview modes, as you can see here in 2D uh, and 3D. Um, and uh, with every uh, new component I add here, um, for example, when I um, have these additional components, you see how the slip ring will grow on the, on the right side. Um, you then have um, the possibility to switch into the 3D mode. Takes a little time um, to load the um, 3D model. Um, you then have the possibility to uh, yeah, rotate the slip ring, to zoom in into the slip ring. You can see the quality is uh, quite good of the model because you can read um, every text on the um, on the slip ring, yeah, and uh, you can see it from every side. You can inspect it as you like. Um, you then have the possibility to see all the components you configured in the lists. Um, you can download several assets um, you have for this configuration. So, for example, a step file, which is a um, yeah standard format for um, 3D models, um, but also um, as a PDF, uh, where you have some electrical informations and some further informations about the slippery. So when you are finished, um, you click on next, uh, you see a, a short overview um, with your configuration code. Uh, you can uh, save your configuration code for further use. You can see all the components you configured um, and you can finally um, add it to in, into your basket. Um, but this is also possible if you are logged in um, because you then can see prices um, and you can um, yeah, check out any kind of product. So now we see um, a short video we made. Um, it's a video uh, we made with a screencast on a mobile device. Um, to show you uh, how um, yeah how the configurator works on a responsive um, site, so you um, open the Slippering configurator. Um, it's now in German, uh, but I think this is necessary at this point. 
you can um, use these uh, yeah these uh, accordion um, areas uh, you can scroll over you have a much more compressed view here in the in a mobile view um, but you also see any kind of information you need you have the preview mode where you can switch into you have a 3d mode um, here's a short preview how to use it because on the mobile device it's a little bit more yeah, convenient uh, to have uh, such legends. You can zoom, you can um, pinch, you can uh, yeah, you can rotate um, everything you can do on a desktop. Uh, you can also do it on a smartphone. Furthermore, there is uh, one functionality, the IR mode. Um, so if you switch to IR mode, uh, your camera turns on and you see in any kind of room. So this is my, my living room. Um, I put it on the table, um, the slip ring, and you can then uh, yeah, walk around it, uh, go inside it so to see what is inside um, the slip ring. Uh, you have a very good quality, um, I would say. You can read every kind of text on the slip ring. Um, very cool functionality and it uh, really helps um, uh, for those who um, yeah, configure a slip ring. So now we'd like to show you um, how this uh, configurator works in the PIMCore backend. So as you can see here, this is the login area for PIMCore. It's a little bit customized for, for um, the Schleifring for our customer. Um, you can log in yourself here. Um, and then you see uh, PIMCO as you know it. Um, we added uh, some uh, perspectives for the power users, for the management here. So um, they uh, mainly use uh, the configurator um, area here um, where you have um, those folders. Um, in these folders you have several configurations. Um, when I open such a configuration, um, yeah, you see several um, attributes and configuration you can do here, for example, the modules um, and uh, stuff like that. And you will find um, the meta configuration in here, um, like Wilhelm uh, described before. This is very important for um, all the yeah all the further attributes for especially for completely new configurations. So this is such a meta configuration I just opened. Um, here you have the images, uh, which is a 2D model. Um, you have the drawing, uh, electrical um, drawing with uh, power and uh, further information around about the, the, um, the implementation uh, for um, the customers. Uh, you then have the step file um, for further 3D use. And last but not least, you have the um, GLB file. So um, the step file always needs to be converted into a yeah, web compatible format like a GLB. Um, and this is a, a little um, but very nice and helpful um, additional feature we added. When you open such a GLB file, um, you not just see a preview of this 3D model in PIMCore, you can also um, rotate it. Uh, you can also zoom in like uh, we've already seen it um, in the front end. Very helpful. Um, it's a little component we built. Um, yeah, uh, so it's uh, also a little enhancement inside PIMCore. Okay, I will now give you a few informations about the 3D and AR technologies that we used. We used mainly FreeJS and ModelViewer. FreeJS is a JavaScript 3D library that offers great cross-browser support and great customizability. ModelViewer, on the other hand, is a more easy out-of-the-box integration, but it has more support for AR on Android and iOS. FreeJS was mainly used for the preview inside of PIMCore and for the desktop 3D view and model viewer is primarily used for the AR view. Okay, yeah, that was the uh, more technical part of our presentation. Um, now we'd like to talk a little bit about the challenges. So every project has its challenges, uh, so um, same here. And I uh, want to start with uh, yeah, the, the 3D part. So um, 3D in the web is still challenging. Uh, there are 
several 3D libraries, uh, Model View, 3JS, um, Babylon JS, um, and so on, uh, which makes uh, the life a little bit easier, but it's still challenging because um, the transformation process um, in front um, is uh, quite time consuming. So there are several traditional 3D formats like Step, like uh, 3DS, um, and so on. Um, and there's no really standardization at this point. And you always have to convert it into a web um, format, um, which is uh, quite good. These, all these web formats, uh, GLB and USD, are very good, um, but you have to transform your data. You have. Um, there are several conversion tools at the market, um, also in the open source um, area. Um, for example, um, Open Cascade is a conversion uh, framework where you convert several um, formats, traditional formats, into modern formats. Um, very helpful. Um, but for us, there is an automatism desirable. So um, we are working on an uh, automatic converter. Uh, so you have to imagine you can drop any kind of 3D model. Uh, format into PIMCore. This is our wish. And PIMCore converts it in the back end um, behind, behind the scenes. Um, it will convert it to a web enabled format like um, GLB and USD. This is something uh, we work on. Yeah, and last but not least, this is not such a surprise. Um, Apple and Google, big players on the market, um, are working on different standards. So um, uh, Google used the GLB format for its devices and Apple um, yeah, uses its, its own um, format uh, called USD and you need both for, uh, yeah, for both, uh, both devices. A uh, second challenge is um, still uh, the, um, the point uh, responsive design, not the responsive design itself, um, but to um, yeah, to compress complex configurations um, with preview and uh, with a lot of images and 3D and augmented reality into um, one, uh, yeah, one view so that you can use it on a, on a smartphone. Um, so there are a lot of informations um, you need for the components. There are a lot of informations the customer need for any component. Um, you have these tables and you need to compress it um, into a few that you can see everything and um, to have um, access to every um, to every functionality. Um, so this is still a, um, a challenge, I would say. Um, and uh, yeah, long titles and long descriptions um, needs to be handled and also the, the interaction with the buttons and stuff like that. So this is always um, a thing when you build configuration, uh, configurator, product configurator. Um, don't forget the, the mobile um, part. And um, yeah, you have to think uh, a lot about how to handle it in mobile and responsive view. Okay, so um, let's look a bit uh, into uh, the future. What is planned? Uh, what we'd like to do next together with our customer? Um, so first of all, we'd like to add more slip rings. Um, there are some slip rings planned, and um, because of the uh, you know, because of the flexibility of PIMCore, um, this is something quite easy. Uh, so the the flexible data model allows you to add just as much products as you like and uh, as much slip rings as you like. And this is one of the yeah one of the great benefits you have when you when you use PIMCore as a backend for a configuration for for a product configurator. Um, you just add a new data model. Okay, you need to do a little bit more in the in the front end. Uh, that's that's right. Um, but uh, you have that backend. You have that flexibility, which is just great and um, gives you a good uh, basic a uh, good base for for the future. Um, we also um, want to enhance uh, the UX. Uh, we want to optimize it more and more. There are still several um, points we'd like to optimize. Yeah, there's um, always a lot to do. And uh, last but not least, uh, we plan. Uh, we are planning an on-the-fly CAD integration, which means the following. Um, so currently, um, as we said before, um, every slip ring can be a completely new slip ring. Um, that means um, all the models, all the 2D images, all the CAD drawings you get as customer um, are not 
exactly that what you configured. Yeah? Um, so you get a kind of a uh, yeah kind of a template um, for it. Um, so uh, we are, we then we now plan um, to uh, yeah, to integrate um, the process of the CAD modeling um, to build an interface um, to the CAD software Solid Edge, which um, works on a backend system in the Schleifring IT. Um, we will send um, an XML um, file to a message queue. Um, this message queue um, will uh, then uh, yeah, be, um, be um, responsible for a multi-user multi capability. Yeah? So every request we, we came from the web needs to be, um, yeah, needs to be queued into the message queue, into the flex pooler. Um, and so then uh, Solid Edge can handle each request after the other. Um, so after this flex pooler, um, a new instance will start the command line interface. So Solid Edge um, will get some information from us, uh, makes a new model, uh, generate new uh, 2D, 2D images, uh, generate new uh, CAD drawings, and send it back to us as um, yeah as normal assets, and we can give it um, give it to the user. Yeah, very cool, very um, interesting functionality uh, we planned here. Um, we are still working on, and uh, hopefully we will uh, launch it next year. And uh, so there is uh, still a lot to do at this project. Um, this is a very, very, um, yeah, very cool project, a very good customer, a very good um, partnership uh, we have with this customer over uh, yeah, a long time. And we're very proud um, to, to make such a uh, yeah, very cool pro uh, project. Okay. Yeah. That's it at this point. Um, this is the slip ring configurator. This was the project we made. Uh, we are not at the end. Uh, we have a lot to do. It's still a very, very cool product, a uh, very cool customer we have here um, with a lot of ideas and um, yeah, uh, with a very good uh, base uh, with PIMCore. Thank you very much. And now it's time for question and answers.